Robotronic Hey guys, so today I wanted to show you my process of making dice. In order to measure out my resin, I take syringes that I bought from my local craft store and measure out 22 milliliters for both parts of my resin. Doing this basically guarantees me that I have equal parts every time. Once I add in both parts of my resin, then I go ahead and mix it for a couple minutes, making sure I scrape the sides and the bottom really well to make sure everything mixes properly. If you don't mix your resin together properly, your dice won't hold shape and they'll get dense in them at just the touch of a fingertip. And you don't want that. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take this liquid glitter and we're going to add three to four drops of it to give it a nice sparkle. Wow indeed! Once you've added your liquid glitter, stir it up and get ready to add some coloring. For this set of dice, I'm going to add in some carmine red and that's going to help give our dice a nice hot pink look. Make sure you don't go overboard putting in your dye. A couple drops is going to be more than enough to get you a nice color that you're looking for. Once you get your resin to the right color that you want, next we're going to get the molds out and start filling them up. For all my dice, I mainly use cap molds. I find them easier to work with and almost less of a cleanup when your dice are done. Go ahead and remove the caps from your molds and start slowly pouring in your resin. When you're filling up your molds, you're going to want to overfill them just a little bit to help reduce bubbles. The way that works is when we put our molds in a pressure pot, the pressure helps shrink down the bubbles to almost microscopic size so you can't see them. So when all those bubbles shrink, you're going to need resin to fill in the voids. To also help reduce the risk of voids in the surface of the dice, we're going to go ahead and add a little bit of resin on the cap of each mold as well. Because again, once the pressure pot reduces the size of those bubbles, we're going to want resin to fill in the areas that have disappeared. You don't want to use too much resin to fill up your caps, but you do want to put enough to where it covers all the numbers, and I'm going to show you why here in a second. Once we get all the cap molds filled up, we're going to go ahead and put the cap on and put them on our little pedestal and get them ready for the pressure pot. And off to the pressure pot we go. Go ahead and put it in the pressure pot. You're going to want to put the lid on and get ready to tighten down all the clamps. You're going to go ahead and tighten the bolts down as hard as you can to make sure that no air leaks out. This is a fairly cheap pressure pot, so it's really important that you make sure everything's tight or else you're going to get an air leak. Once all your clamps are tightened, you're going to fill it up to about 45 psi and you're going to wait a day. 24 hours later. After a day, you're going to go ahead and release the pressure from the valve. Be careful because it can be quite loud. Go ahead and unscrew your bolts and remove your dice from the pot. To remove the dice from the mold, you're going to take the cap off and break away any excess resin from the mold. You're then going to push on the bottom of the mold while stretching it out to help the dice pop right out. You're going to go ahead and do this 
for all your molds. And unfortunately, it looks like we didn't put quite enough resin in this mold, so the D4 has a giant void in the tip. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to remake this whole set, because I like consistency in my dice. In order to do that, we're just going to do everything we just did all over again. Damn, that really is unfortunate. all right let's see how this set turned out to get the dice out we're going to do everything we just did forcefully push on the bottom gently stretch it open dice pop out boom bada bang bada bang and let's see how they look already i can tell that the d4 looks a lot better no voids no nothing so i think we got a perfect set of dice here And as you can see, this set looks way better than the last set. No voids, no issues whatsoever. And I love the color. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and sand everything down using Zona paper. We're going to go ahead and start with the green Zona paper, which is the roughest, then gray, then blue, then red, then teal. And we're going to finish it up with the white Zona paper, which is also like a polish. Then I'm going to spray some plastic shine on the dice to give it that extra shine and get up rid of any finger marks that there might be on there. Once we're done polishing up all the dice, we're now going to ink all the numbers in. In order to paint the numbers in, all you're going to do is take your paintbrush and smear the paint right on into the numbers. Really smear it in there, don't worry about getting it on the actual face of the die because once you get your number all inked in, you're going to wipe it off on a paper towel. Once you've inked in all your numbers, your set's complete. Let's go ahead and hear how these dice sound. Beautiful. And there you have it guys, that's my entire process for making dice. If you like this video and you want to see more, please like, comment, and subscribe. It really means a lot to me. I'm trying to hit 60 subscribers by the end of the month. Otherwise, I'll see you all in the next one.